adoption of container orchestration platforms is accelerating at a rate as fast or faster than any category in enterprise IT. Survey data from enterprise technology research shows Kubernetes specifically leads the pack in both spending velocity and market share. Now like virtualization in its early days, containers bring many new performance and tuning challenges. In particular, ensure, ensuring consistent and predictable application performance is tricky, especially because containers, they're so flexible and they enable portability, things are constantly changing. DevOps pros have to wade through a sea of observability data and tuning the environment becomes a continuous exercise of trial and error. This endless cycle taxes resources and kills operational efficiency. So teams often just capitulate and simply dial up and throw unnecessary resources at the problem. Stormforge is a company founded mid last decade that is attacking these issues with a combination of machine learning and data analysis. And with me to talk about a new offering that directly addresses these concerns is Matt Provo, founder and CEO of Stormforge. Matt, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Good to see you, thanks for having me. Yeah, so we saw you guys at uh, a KubeCon, sort of first introduced you to our community, but add a little color to yep. my intro there if you will. Yeah, well you semi stole my thunder, but uh, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Uh, absolutely agree with everything you said in the intro. Um, you know, the, the problem that we have set out to solve, which is tailor-made for the use of, of real machine learning, not machine learning kind of as a, as a marketing tag, uh, is, is connected to how uh, workloads on Kubernetes are, are, are really managed uh, from a resource efficiency standpoint. And so a number of years ago, we built uh, the, the core machine learning uh, engine and have now turned that into a platform around how uh, Kubernetes resources are, are managed at scale. And so organizations, today as they're uh, moving more workloads over, uh, uh, sort of drink the Kool-Aid of the flexibility that comes with Kubernetes and how many knobs you can turn, and developers in many, re many ways love it. Uh, once they start to operationalize the use of Kubernetes and move uh, workloads from pre-production into production, uh, they run into a pretty significant complexity wall. And, uh, and this is where Stormforge comes in uh, to try to help them uh, manage those resources more effectively, uh, in ensuring and implementing the right kind of automation uh, that empowers developers into the process, ultimately, does not automate them out of it. So you've got news, you've got a hard launch coming and to, yeah. to further address these problems. Tell us yeah. about that. Yeah, so historically, um, uh, you know, like any machine learning engine, uh, we think about data inputs and what kind of data is going to feed our, uh, our system to be able to draw uh, the appropriate insights out, uh, out for the user. And so historically, we are, are, we've kind of been single-threaded on load and performance tests uh, in, in a pre-production environment. Uh, and there's been a lot of adoption of that, a lot of excitement around it, and, and frankly, amazing results. Um, my vision has been uh, for us to be able to close the loop, however, between uh, data coming uh, out of pre-production and, and the associated optimizations and data coming out of production, a production environment, uh, and, and our ability to optimize that. Uh, a lot of our users along the way have, have said um, these results in pre-production are, are fantastic. Um, how do I know they reflect reality of what my application is going to experience in a production environment? And so um, we're super excited to, to announce um, kind of the second core module for our platform uh, called Optimize Live. Uh, the data input for that is uh, observability and telemetry data coming out of um, APM platforms and, and other data sources. So this is like Nirvana, so I wonder if we could talk a little bit more about the, the, the challenges that this addresses. I mean, I've been around a while and it really have observed, and I used to ask you know, technology companies all the time, okay, so you're, you're telling me beforehand what the optimal configuration should be and yeah. resource allocation. What happens if something changes? Yeah. And then it's always, always a pause. Yeah. And Kubernetes is more of a, a rapidly changing environment than anything we've ever seen. Yeah. So this is specifically the problem you're addressing. Maybe talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so we view what happens in pre-production as sort of the experimentation phase. Mm -hmm. And our machine learning is, is allowing the user to experiment and design and scenario plan. What we're doing uh, with Optimize Live and adding the, the production piece 
is uh, what we kind of also call kind of our observation phase. And so you need to be able to, to, to run the appropriate checks and balances between those two environments to ensure that what you're actually deploying and monitoring from an application performance, uh, from a, a, a cost standpoint, is aligning with your SLOs and your SLAs as well as your business objectives. And so that's the entire point of, uh, of this addition is to, is to allow our users uh, to experience uh, hopefully the, the nirvana associated with that because um, it's, an exciting, uh, it's an exciting opportunity for them and, and really something that uh, nobody else is doing from the standpoint of, of closing that loop. So you said up front um, machine learning not as a marketing tag. Yeah. So I, I want you to sort of double click on that. What's yeah. different than how other companies approach this problem? Yeah, I mean, uh, part of it is a bias for me and a frustration as a founder of, of the reason I started the company in the first place. I, I think uh, machine learning or AI gets tagged to a lot of stuff. Uh, it's very buzzwordy, it's, it, it looks good. Um, I'm fortunate to have found a number of folks uh, from the outset of the company uh, with you know, PhDs in applied mathematics and a focus on actually building uh, real AI at the core uh, that is connected to solving the right kind of actual business problems. And so, uh, you know, for the first three or four years of the company's history, we really operated as a lab, and that was our, fo our focus. We, were, we then decided we're trying to connect um, a, a fantastic team with differentiated technology to the right market timing. And when we saw all of these pain points around how fast the adoption of containers and Kubernetes have taken place, but the pain that the developers are running into, we, we found it, we actually found for ourselves uh, that this was the perfect use case. So how, how specifically does Optimize Live work? Can you add a little detail on that? Yeah, so when you, um, uh, uh, many organizations today have an, an existing monitoring APM observability suite really in, in place. Um, they've also got um, they've also got a metric source, so this could be something like Datadog or, or Prometheus. And uh, once that data starts flowing, um, there's an out of the box or, or kind of a piece of Kubernetes that ships with it called the VPA or the Vertical Pod Autoscaler. And uh, less than, really less than 1% of Kubernetes users take advantage of the, of the VPA, mostly because it's really challenging to configure and it's not super compatible with the, the, the tool set or the, eco, you know, the ecosystem of tools uh, in a Kubernetes environment. And so our biggest competitor is the VPA. And what's happening uh, in this environment or in, in this world for developers is they're having to make decisions on a, on a number of different metrics or, or resource uh, elements, typically things like memory and CPU. Mm -hmm. And they have to decide what are the, what are the, limita what are the requests I'm going to allow for this uh, application and what are the limits. So what are those thresholds that I'm going to be okay with so that I can, again, try to hit my business objectives and keep in line with my SLAs. And to your earlier point in the intro, it's often guesswork. Um, you know, they either have to rely on uh, out-of-the-box recommendations that ship with the databases and other services that they uh, are using, or it's a super manual process to go through and, and try to configure and tune this. And so with Optimize Live, we're making that one click. Mm. And so we're continuously and consistently uh, observing and watching the data that's flowing through these tools, and we're serving back um, recommendations for the user. They can choose to let those recommendations auto automatically patch and deploy, or they can retain some semblance of control uh, over the recommendations and manually deploy them into their environment themselves. Um, and we, again, really believe that the, the user knows their application. They know their, the goals that they have. We don't. Uh, uh, but we have a system that's smart enough to align with the business objectives and ultimately um, provide the uh, relevant recommendations at so, that point. So the business objectives are an input from the application team, yep. and then your system is smart enough to uh, ad adapt and address those. Application over application, mm -hmm. right? And, and so the, the thresholds in any given organization across their different ecosystem of apps or environment could be different. Mm -hmm. The business objectives could be different. And so we don't want to predefine that for people. We want to give them 
the opportunity to build those thresholds in and then allow the machine learning to, uh, to learn and to uh, send recommendations within those bounds. And we're going to hear later from a customer who's uh, hosting a, a Drupal, one of the largest uh, Drupal hosters. So it's all do-it-yourself across thousands of customers, yeah. so it's, it's you know, very unpredictable. I want to make something clear, though, as to where you fit in the ecosystem. You're yeah. not an observability platform. You yeah. leverage observability platforms, right? So talk about that and where you fit in, into the ecosystem. Yeah, so that's a great point. Um, we, uh, we're also you know, a, a Series B startup and, and growing. Um, we're, we've made the choice to be um, very intentionally focused on the problems that we solve. Uh, and we've uh, chosen to partner or integrate otherwise. And so we do get put into the APM category from, from time to time. We're really an intelligence platform. And that intelligence and insights that we're able to draw is because, we, because of the core machine learning we've built over the years. And uh, we also don't want organizations or users to have to switch from tools and investments that they've already made. And so we were never going to... Um, uh, we were never going to catch up to, to, to Datadog or Dynatrace or, or, or Splunk or AppDynamics or some of the other, and, and we're totally fine with that. They, they've got great market share and, and penetration. They, they do solve real problems. Instead, uh, we felt like users would want a seamless integration uh, into the, the tools they're already using. And so we, 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 we view ourselves as uh, kind of the intel inside uh, for that kind of a scenario. And uh, it takes observability and APM data and insights that were somewhat reactive. Uh, they're visualized and, and somewhat reactive, and, and we make those, uh, we, add that, uh, we add that proactive nature onto it, the insights and, and ultimately the, the appropriate level of, of automation. So when I think, Matt, about cloud native, and I, and I go back to the sort of origins of CNCF, yeah. it was a you know, handful of companies, and yeah. now you look at the participants, it'll you know, make your eyes bleed. Yeah. How, how do you address Dealing with all those companies, and what are the what's the partnership yeah. strategy? Yeah, it's so interesting because um, it's just that even that CNCF landscape has exploded. Um, it was not too long ago where it was as small or smaller th than the FinOps uh, landscape today. Which, by the way, the FinOps piece is, is also on a, a neck breaking you know growth curve. Um, we uh, I do see, although there are a lot of companies and a lot of tools. We're starting to see a significant amount of consistency or hardening of the tool chain uh, you know, for, with our customers and, and, and users. And so we've made strategic and intentional decisions on uh, deep partnerships, in some cases like OEM uh, uses of our technology and, and certainly um, you know, intelligent and seamless integrations uh, into a few. So, you know, we're, we'll be announcing uh, a, a really exciting partnership with AWS, uh, and and uh, they're specifically what they're doing with EKS, uh, their their Kubernetes distribution and services. Uh, we've got a deep partnership and integration with Datadog, and then um, with Prometheus, uh, and specifically cloud provider, a, a few other cloud providers that are uh, operating managed Prometheus uh, environments. Okay, so where do you want to take this thing? It's not you're not taking the observability guys head on. Smart yeah. move. So many of those even entering the market now. Yeah. But what is the vision? Yeah. So we've had this debate a lot as well because it's super difficult to create a category. Uh, you know, on one hand, um, you know, you know, I have a lot of respect for founders and, and companies that do that. On the other hand, um, from a market timing standpoint, you know, we fit into AI ops. That's really where we fit. Um, you know, we are, we've made a bet on the future of Kubernetes uh, and, and what that's going to look like. And so um, from a containers and Kubernetes standpoint, that's our bet. Uh, but we're an AI ops platform. You know, we'll continue getting better at, uh, what, uh, at the problems we solve with machine learning. And we'll continue adding data inputs. So we'll go, you know, we'll go beyond the application layer, which is really where we play now. Uh, we'll add you know kind of whole cluster uh, optimization capabilities across uh, across the full stack, and the way we'll get there is by continuing to add different data inputs that uh, make sense uh, across the different layers of the stack, and and uh, I, it's exciting. Um, we can stay vertically oriented on the problems that we're really good at solving, but we can become more applicable and compatible over time. So that's your next concentric circle as the observability vendors. 
expand their observation space, you yep. can just play right into that. Yeah. The more data you get, because you're purpose built to solving these types of problems. Yeah, so you can imagine a world right now out of observability, we're taking things like telemetry data. Mm -hmm. um, pretty quickly, you can imagine a world where we take traces and logs and other data inputs as, as that ecosystem continues to grow. It just feeds our own, uh, you know, we are reliant on data. Um, so. Excellent. Matt, thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate thanks for you having coming me. on. Okay, keep it right there. In a moment, we're going to hear from a customer with a highly diverse and constantly changing environment that I mentioned earlier. They went through a major replatforming with Kubernetes on AWS. You're watching theCUBE, your leader in enterprise tech coverage. Getting started with Kubernetes may be straightforward, but as you ramp up for day two operations, you're forced to make a choice. Either over-provision cloud resources by 50% or more, driving costs through the roof, risk business impacting application performance and availability issues, or slow down time to market to spend time manually tuning your complex Kubernetes environment. It's a terrible choice to have to make, especially given how important cloud-native transformation is to your company's success. What if you could ensure your cloud-native environment was never over-provisioned while still meeting SLAs and SLOs and do it automatically so your dev team could focus on innovating? StormForge automates the process of achieving and maintaining Kubernetes resource efficiency at scale. We provide a platform for continuous scenario planning using machine learning to provide actionable insights both in production and pre-production. In production, StormForge leverages the wealth of data you're already collecting from observability solutions like Prometheus or Datadog. With minimal time and effort, we start providing recommendations for configuration changes that will boost efficiency. Recommendations can be implemented automatically or with your approval you're always in full control. While production optimization provides fast and easy efficiency gains, pre-production optimization lets you go deep to fully understand system behavior and achieve peak efficiency. StormForge performs experiments in your dev cluster using appropriate workloads to simulate a wide range of scenarios. Our machine learning analyzes the essentially infinite number of possible configurations to minimize cost, ensure performance, and find insights and patterns to drive key architectural improvements. StormForge closes the gaps organization's experience as they reach day two Kubernetes operations. The complexity gap, where effectively managing your Kubernetes environment becomes overwhelming. The data gap, where the amount of data you're collecting has grown exponentially, but you're left without actionable insights. And finally, the skills gap, where you need to do more with less and Kubernetes experts are in short supply. Getting started with StormForge is as easy as one, two, three. Talk to one of our Kubernetes experts, see a demo, and take it for a test drive. Start today to reduce cloud costs, improve application performance, and get your dev teams focused on innovating. Okay, we're back with Charlie Dublin. He's the Vice President of Product Management at Acquia. Great to see you, Charlie. Welcome nice to theCUBE. Great to meet you, Dave. So, Acquia, tell us about the company. Sure. Uh, so Acquia is the largest um, and best provider of Drupal hosting uh, capabilities. Uh, we rank number two in the digital experience platform space, uh, just behind Adobe. So very strong business, uh, growing well, and innovating every day. Yeah, Drupal, o open source, you know, super deep, high quality content management system and, and more experience. What you call it a, an experience platform? An experience platform, open, flexible. We want our customers to have choice the ability to solve their problems how they want, leveraging the power of the open source community. So what were the, what were the big challenges? You just describe your, you know, kind of the business drivers. We're going to talk about StormForge, but the things that you were facing, some of the challenges that kind of led you to StormForge. Sure. Uh, so our objective uh, first is to provide the best experience with Drupal. So that entails uh, lots of capabilities around ease of use for Drupal itself. Uh, but that has to run on the world, a world-class platform. It has to be the most performant. It has to be the most secure. Uh, it needs to be flexible to enable customers to run Drupal however they want to run Drupal. And so that involves the ability to uh, support thousands of different kinds of modules that come out of the community. We want our customers to have choice with Drupal. 
and to be able to support those choices on our platform. So optionality is key. You know, sometimes that creates other challenges, like you've got one of everything. So how do you, how do you deal with that, that, mm -hmm. that, that challenge? Yeah, that's a great question. Every strength is a form of weakness. Yeah. Uh, and so um, our objective is really first to provide that choice, uh, but to do it in a cost-efficient way. So we try to provide reference architectures for customers, opinionation for our customers to standardize, take out some of the complexity that, might, that they might have if everything were a snowflake. Uh, but, our, but our objective is really to support their needs and err on the side of that flexibility. All right, so you guys had to go through a major replatforming effort around containers and Kubernetes. Can you, can you talk about that and what sure. role Stormforge played? Sure. So tied to the last point, our objective is to provide customers the highest performance and most secure platform. Uh, the entire industry, of course, is moving to Kubernetes and leveraging containers. Uh, we are a large uh, consumer of AWS services and are undergoing a major replatforming away from a legacy AWS towards Kubernetes and containers. And so that major uh, replatforming effort uh, is intending to enable customers to run applications how they want to. And the power of Kubernetes and containers is to support that. And, uh, and so we, we looked at StormForge as a way to us, for us to right-size resource capacity to support our customers' applications. I, I love it. Leg AWS is now legacy. I, Andy Jassy one time said that if they had to do, redo Amazon, they'd do it in Lambda and you yeah. know, using serverless. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, yeah, it's been around a long time now. Yeah. Okay, so what were the outcomes th that you were seeking? Was it you know, better management, cost reduction, and, and, and how'd that go? Sure. So our, our customers run a wide range of applications. We support customers leveraging Drupal uh, in every industry. Uh, globally, we do business in 30 different countries. And so what you have is a very wide range of applications and consumer um, and consumption models. And so we felt that uh, leveraging StormForge would put us in a position where we'd be able to right-size resource to those different kinds of applications, essentially let the platform align to how customers wanted to operate their applications. And... Um, and so StormForge's capability in conjunction with Kubernetes and, and containers really puts us in a position where customers are able to get the performance that they want uh, get uh, and when they need it on demand. A lot of the auto-scaling capabilities that you get from Kubernetes and containers supports that. And so it really enables customers to run their applications how they want to functionally as well as from a, a performance perspective. So this move toward containers and microservices, sort of modern application development, mm -hmm coincides with a, a, a modern platform like, like StormForge. Correct. And so there were, I'm sure there are alternatives out there. Why StormForge? You know, maybe you could explain a little bit more about why, you know, from your perspective, what it does and why you chose them. Sure. So we leverage uh, AWS uh, in many respects in terms of the underlying platform, uh, but we are a very strong DIY for how that platform supports Drupal applications. We view our expertise as being the best at Drupal. And so we felt like uh, for us to truly maximize, uh, you know, Kubernetes and containers and the, the power of those uh, underlying technologies, on the one hand, allows us to automate more and, and do more for customers. On the other side of it, it puts a tremendous burden on the level of expertise in order to do that well for every customer every day at scale. And so that at scale part of that was the challenge. And so we leverage uh, Stormforge to enable us to right size applications for performance, provide us cost benefits, you know, allocate what you need when you need it uh, for our customers. And that at scale piece is, is a critical part. We could do elements of it internally. We tried to do elements of that internally, but as you start getting to scale uh, from, you know, a few apps to hundreds of apps to certainly across our fleet of tens of thousands of applications, you really need something that leverages machine learning. You really need a technology that's integrated well within uh, AWS, and uh, StormForge provided that solution. So, make sure I get this right. So it sounds like you, you sort of, from a skill standpoint, transitioned or applied your skills from turning knobs, if you will, mm -hmm. to automation and scale. Correct. And, and what was that like? Was it, I mean, was the team like leaning into that, you know, loving it? Was it a, was it a, you know, a challenging thing for you guys to get there? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the benefit in the way that StormForge applies it, so they leverage um, machine learning to enable us to make better decisions. So we still have the control elements, but we have much greater insight into what that would mean ahead of time before customers would be affected. So we still have the knobs we need, but we're able to do it at scale. Uh, and then from the automation point, it allows us to focus our deep expertise on making Drupal and the core hosting platform capabilities awesome sort of the stuff and resource allocation, resource consumption that's an enabler 
uh, we can outsource that to to Stormforge. So this is a this is not b batch. It's uh, you're basically doing this in sort of near real time. Optimize Live, right? Is the mm -hmm. is the is the capability? Maybe you can describe what sure. That is. Yeah. So Optimize Live is is new. We're in testing with that. Um, we've we've done extensive uh, testing with Stormforge on the core call it decision making logic that allows for the right sizing of consumption and resources for our customer application. So that are, has already been tested. So the core engine has been tested. Optimize Live allows us to do that in real time to make uh, policy decisions across our fleet on what's the right trade-off between performance, cost, other parameters. Um, again, it, it informs our decision-making and our management of our platform that would be very, very difficult uh, otherwise. Without StormForge, we'd have to do massive uh, data aggregation. We'd have to have uh, machine learning and additional infrastructure to manage to derive this information and, and, and. And that is not our core business. We don't want to be doing that. We want insights to manage our platform to enable customers, and Stormforge provides that. So, okay, so it's kind of human in the loop thing. Hey, here's what, like our recommendation, or here's some options that you might want to, here's a path that you want to go down, it, but it's not taking that action for you necessarily, right? Correct. You don't want that. Uh, you want to make sure that the, the, the experts are, uh, have uh, a hand in it still, is that correct? Correct, you still want the experts to have a hand in it, but you don't want them to have a hand in it on each individual app. You need that that machine learning capability, that insight mm -hmm. that allows you to do that at scale. So if you had to step back and think about your relationship with StormForge, what was the business impact of you know, bringing them in? Yeah, first, uh, from a time to market perspective, we're able to get to market with a, a higher performance, more cost-effective solution earlier, so there's that benefit. Uh, second benefit, to the earlier point, is that we're able to make um, resource allocation decisions focused on where we're, our core competency is, not into the guts of, of Kubernetes containers and the like. Uh, third is that the, um, the machine learning talent that StormForge brings to the table is world class. Uh, I've run uh, machine learning teams, data science teams, and would put them in the top 1% of any team that I've worked with in terms of their expertise. So the, 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 the logic and decision making and insights is outstanding. So we can get to the best decision, the optimal decision much more quickly. And then when you, you accompany that with the newer product and optimize live with that automation component you mentioned, you know, all the better. So we're able to uh, make decisions uh, quicker, get it implemented in our platform and realize the benefits. Uh, what customers get from that is much better performance of their applications, more real time, higher, um, able to scale um, dy more dynamically. What we get is resource efficiency and our network and platform efficiency. We're not over allocating uh, capacity that costs us more money than we should or under allocating capacity that could um, have a lower performance um, solution for our customers. So that puts money in your pocket and your customers are happier. So they're higher renewal rates, less churn, Correct. Higher prices over time as you add more capabilities. That's correct. What's it like, well, you know, new application approach, Kubernetes, containers, fine. Okay, I need a, a modern platform, but it's a relatively new company, StormForge, mm -hmm. right? What's it like working with them? Sure, uh, their, their talent level is, is world class. And, um, you know, I wasn't familiar with them uh, when I joined Acquia. Uh, came to know them and been very impressed. There's many other providers in the market that um, will speak to some similar capabilities and would make many claims. But um, from our assessment, um, our view is that they're the right partner for us, they're the right size, uh, they're flexible, excellent team. They've evolved their technology roadmap uh, very quickly. Uh, they deliver on their promises and commits. They're a very good team to work with. So I've been very impressed for such an early stage company to deliver. And to, and to support our business so, so rapidly. Um, so I think that's a strength. And then I think, again, the quality of the people, that's been manifested in the product itself. It's a high quality product. I think it's unique to the market. So Napoleon Hill, famous writer, thinker, he wrote Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't read it, check it out. But he is, one of his concepts is a lever, a small lever can move a big rock. You mm -hmm. know, it can be very powerful. Do you, do you see Stormforge as having that kind of effect on your business, that change on your business? I do. Yeah, like I said, I think the, uh, the engagement with them has proven, and this isn't you know, uh, debatable based on the results that we've had with them. Mm -hmm. we, we ran that team through the ringer to, to validate the technology. Again, we'd heard lots of promises from other companies. Ran that team through the ringer with extensive testing across many customers, large and small, uh, many use cases to really stress test their, you know, their, their capabilities. And they came out uh, well ahead of any metric we, we put forth, 
even well ahead of claims that they had coming into the engagement, they exceeded that. Uh, and so that's why I'm here, why I'm an advocate, uh, why I think they're an outstanding company with a tremendous amount of potential. So thinking about, you know, what can you tell us about where you want to take the company and, and the partnership with Stormford? Sure. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think the, the main um, next step is for us to engage with uh, Stormforge to drive automation, drive decisioning as we expand and move more and more customers over to our new platform. We're going to uncover use cases, different uh, challenges as we go. So I think the, um, you know, it's a learning process for uh, both both sides, but I think the um, it's been um, successful so far and, and has a lot of potential. Sounds like you had a great business and, and a great new partnership. So thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate thank you very it. much, appreciate your time. All right, my pleasure. And thank you for watching theCUBE, your global leader in enterprise tech coverage. Stormforge automates Kubernetes resource efficiency at scale. The Stormforge platform provides all the tools you need to run your Kubernetes applications at peak performance and efficiency. In this video, I will walk you through the newest addition to the Stormforge platform, we call it Optimize Life, a revolutionary, simple way to optimize your containers. Optimize Life basically looks at observability data you're already capturing from your production system. Our machine learning is learning from historical usage and trends, and then making recommendations for updated CPU and memory settings at whatever frequency you specified when you configured it. After you deployed Optimize Life and connected it to your observability tools, it automatically detects all your apps within your production system. From this list, you can select the applications you want to optimize. Let's take a look at how that works. After selecting an application, you just have to follow a few simple steps. For CPU and memory, you can define upper and lower limits and your risk tolerance. Next, you select the recommendation frequency. This defines how often the machine learning algorithm calculates a new recommendation. And as a last step, you can choose between patching the configuration for this container manually or automatically. Optimize Life also comes with a Grafana dashboard to visualize the results of your optimizations. What you can see here is an example of what the actual results might look like. In this example, the yellow line is actual CPU usage. The blue and red show the CPU request and limits as recommended by machine learning. You can see how closely they track the actual usage. Optimize Life has already a broad ecosystem. It runs on any cloud with any CNCF certified Kubernetes distribution and integrates well with your already existing observability tools. Stormforge. Optimization has never been easier. Okay, we're set to wrap up this session on solving K8's complexity gap, optimizing with machine learning, brought to you by Stormforge. You know, containers, they're all about simplifying the packaging of application components. And the world needed an abstraction layer to simplify the management of all these containers that are being created and deployed. Hence, the explosive adoption of Kubernetes, which rose from a series of improbable events to take the application development world by storm. We heard today how Stormforge is introducing Optimize Live, marrying data from pre-production environments with telemetry data from observability platforms in production settings and using machine intelligence to accelerate insights on which actions to take to improve application performance. Now being able to correlate what you thought was going to happen and be optimal in a pre-production environment and then iterating on what's actually happening in a real world production setting and bridging the gap between those two worlds, that's new and that's exciting. You know, unlike the days of virtualization where this type of optimization took the better part of a decade and a ton of tribal knowledge. In today's world, that time to optimization is being compressed by companies like Stormforge, combining data with AI and cloud native APIs to leverage an ecosystem of innovations in observability to accelerate high quality application delivery. Kubernetes is storming the castle and there's no stopping it. Stormforge and a host of companies are stepping up to help customers take advantage of this wave by delivering technologies that help predict and manage customer experiences and accelerate innovation. Remember, all these sessions will be available immediately on demand at thecube.net and at stormforge.io. Thanks for watching, solving the Kubernetes complexity gap by optimizing with machine learning, brought to you by Stormforge. 
and theCUBE, your leader in enterprise tech coverage. We'll see you next time.